Hey, in this video I want to show you how to create analog display devices by using dynamic materials in Unreal Engine 4. For that I uh, created already a very simple model for the clock and um, also for the background and, and the boy pointer itself so we can simply import them here. You can see it's just a very simple uh, material here for the um, clock pattern itself and then uh, we have the pointer one pointer is the more bigger one and here we have the smaller pointer so and we want to trigger them um, by using the in-game time okay good enough and we want to start with a texture sample so we can create here this one with the background so it's the clock background and let's plug it in here and yeah, you can see it and we will already um, apply this here to this uh, mesh okay so then um, we have two more materials or two more texture one for the big uh, pointer and one for the small pointer and we will start with a big pointer um, so this is uh, for the minute so and we want to uh, make them rotate around uh, the middle point so let's use the rotator for that so we will implement the rotator here and we will plug this in, in the UV import so and as you can see here the center is right in the middle so I um, created this one that this uh, pointer can rotate really around the middle point but if you have some other texture you can uh, simply recreate uh, that and, and change the center point here and for now we um, simply want to set up the right part of the two textures so how we can achieve that we uh, can see the pointer overlaid over the um, background so and that's very simple we can use a blurb node for that so this is the linear interpolation and we will use this one as one input and then we will use the other texture this one is another input and use the alpha channel here as the lerp and as you can see here it's already worked so if you change this then it started already at the correct time and yeah at least this is already um, the most important stuff so if you just want a clock which is rotating and doesn't care about the correct time you can stick with that so as you can see here in the corners you have the um, pointers but it doesn't matter for us here um, because we just use uh, the circle and we will not see the pointer uh, in, in the corners um, but if you care about that uh, maybe you, you use this um, then you can just use a simple opacity mask here and, and as an input um, let's um, maybe we can add a um, small pointer so we will change this uh, to the small pointer and first of all we will overlay the two pointers and afterwards we will implement then the background so we will use this lerp node and we will use the RGB of both and um, yeah, let's plug this in here already and now we have to do this uh, also um, here for the uh, we use this alpha as you can um, let's take a look here 
Ah, okay, it's not um, visible. Um, yeah, that's uh, it's fine. Um, yeah, what we need is this alpha input here has to be also the sum or the addition of both of these texture. So we will um, delink this one and use another layer, but just uh, to pick the alpha. This alpha value and this alpha value. And let's uh, take also this alpha value here to lerp it and use the alpha input here. And as you can see it now, um, we have the two pointers. And if we use another rotator, maybe if this is minus one and this is minus 0 0.06, and then you can see it already works that we have the two pointers here. But what we want to achieve is that we can have not only a uh, clock which is turning, so we can change it. Here in the clock we want to change it by the time and needed that we have a parameter that we can simply manipulate here um, via the dynamic, dynamic material and that we can uh, change it then later manual via um, blueprint. So and we want to um, implement that so uh, for now I will set this speed here to zero and just take care about uh, the big pointer and um, I need an um, parameter value and it should be an um, scalar parameter and first of all we want to take a look um, what is the range for that and uh, let's see uh, what happens if we change this parameter and we have pi here um, and, and you can see it's half of the circle, so if you have 2 pi, then it's um, uh, it's one around. So let's uh, pick the pi, and we want to multiply that uh, first of all with a factor which um, seems to be 2. And then um, we want to multiply that by pi. And yeah, let's take a look here. If we have a value of zero, it should be zero. And we have a value of one, it should still zero. And 2.5 should be in the half. 0.75 should be here on the left side. So this already works. That's good. Okay, and what we want to achieve now is, first of all, um, in the clock it's very nice that uh, we start in the um, in the center up, um, in the upwards direction. But if this would be your uh, your offset, if this would be your um, zero point, then you need some some offset to the circle, and here we want to implement this as a parameter, so this is our offset parameter and we want to add this to our value so for example now if we have an offset of 0 0.75 and we have a value here of 0 then we start see on, on the left side and if we have a value of 0 0.25 then we start here on the right side. So, um, but for now we can um, stick it or let it uh, to to zero. That's fine. And what we need is um, also we want to scale the factor because now we know that we have 60 minutes here. So we need the max value and the current value. So we do not want to, or we could calculate it in the, in the blueprint, but it's uh, more obvious to make it here in the material. So we need two more um, parameters, which is on the one hand, the value itself. And on the other hand, we have the max value. 
and we can divide this so that this would always uh, give us a value between 0 and 1 and uh, yeah maybe if we do not have this whole circle so in, in the clock it's easy because we have 360 degrees but for example if you just have um, the upper half of the circle and you just want to go from the left side to the right side then uh, you will not um, go by the complete value of from 0 to 1 um, you just will go by the half of the, the circle so we need another factor which will be the scale factor or multiply factor and uh, that has to be multiplied here with our input and yeah that's it for the um, big pointer so let's apply it here scale factor has to be one course we want to have a whole circle and the offset uh, we can let it to um, stick to zero here and the max value uh, should be um, 60 um, and let's take a look if we say we are uh, have 23 minutes here for the value then yeah it works that's good so we can simply add the a minute value here and that and, and that's fine but we will rename it um, just to make clear, uh, clear later so this one will be the value in minutes and the max value also for minutes and we can yeah simply use the same function we have the value here for the hour and the max value also for the hour which is uh, not 60 we have 12 it's 12 here um, because we have uh, 12 for a.m. and then another round for uh, p.m. Um, oh. so uh, we need a speed also of uh, one of course here and <clears throat> or minus one here that's it and now we can start by creating the blueprint for that so it's just a simple lecture blueprint nothing complicated and it's um, the clock um, the blueprint for the clock Okay, let's uh, set up uh, here a material instance for this. So it's for the block MI. And now let's start to create the blueprint for that. So we can open the blueprint, go in the event tick, and as you maybe remember, we have the in game time in the game state. So we um, ask the game state and cast. To our game state which is this one and we want to have the in-game time delivered where we use just the minute and the hours so we can break it here and uh, what we want to do is now we want this material and we want to influence the um, float so what we do is we set the scalar parameter value, set scalar parameter value on materials, this one, and one for the minutes and one for the hours. And we have here our value for the minute, and we have here our value for the hour. So let's use this one. and then we can simply use the minute value here 
and we can simply use the hour while you're here. You can have it a more smooth, so then you can simply divide this value by 60. And then you can add this. This one. Let's try it out. And as you can see here, it works, and you have a smooth transition for the hour pointer, and also, of course, a smooth transition uh, for the minute pointer. Uh, I can show you another example in the um, project I'm currently working at. It's uh, the Tacho uh, for a train. And there we use it um, just to show the speed. And we speed up a bit, and you can see, so it goes. Ah, when you see it starts here on the left and just goes um, to the max speed. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next part.